We have a lot of news right now from the passage of that Texas election bill to the White House response to the end of the war in Afghanistan. I want to bring in political science chair and professor at Howard University, Dr. Ravi Perry, to give us some more analysis on these issues. Good to see you, Dr. Perry, as always. Uh, I want to start with Texas. Break down what the Texas election bill means for black and brown voters. Well, it means the end of the road uh, for black and brown voters there in Texas. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Texas state legislature has been in Republican hands for many, many decades now. And uh, throughout those decades of leadership, they have sought to uh, widow down the protections for uh, Americans simply trying to cast a ballot to vote. It's something to be uh, to note that uh, they have sought in this particular iteration uh, to minimize the number of polling locations, of course, uh, in the locations of the most of the state's most largely African American uh, and, and Latino uh, counties. And so what this says is that it's going to be much harder for African Americans to vote. Uh, and for Latinos to vote in, in the state of Texas. Um, and it also makes it clear, hopefully, to voters there uh, that it's really important to pay attention to vote in state and local elections so they know who the state representatives and state senators are. And those Texas Democrats, well, they're now calling on the Senate, of course, to act on voting rights. But what can be done on the federal level? Well, we're waiting on, of course, uh, the Senate to take action on the House uh, vote for, uh, which did support the passage of the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Uh, but we also need, of course, to see passage of uh, HR 1 in, uh, in the Senate of the uh, um, People uh, uh, Vote uh, for the People Act, uh, both of which would, which would eliminate the partisan gerrymandering and the uh, racial non-preclearance that exists currently in counties and districts throughout the country that have historically uh, disenfranchised black folks. That was, those laws would go away immediately with both one and four. And I would emphasize here uh, in the nation's capital that the D.C. statehood bill is equally important in terms of voting rights. Uh, we can't extend voting rights to the country and then leave out 700,000 Americans living in our nation's capital. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Perry, I want to turn now to Afghanistan. A majority of the United States public was in favor of the troop withdrawal, but the president right now, he's under criticism for the way he handled the situation. Could he done it any differently? Could the chaos we saw have been prevented at any point? Unfortunately, I think the answer to that is no. If we, if we go all the way back to 2001, we remember there was one sole member of the House of Representatives that voted against going to Afghanistan. And of course, that was uh, Representative Barbara Lee. And, and she uh, is the only person uh, who had the wisdom and the foresight that the rest of us, in uh, many ways, did not have. This has been a losing war for America for many, many years now, and several prior presidents have tried to uh, find some measure of success that they can hang their hat on uh, while trying to minimize American casualties and the American presence in Afghanistan. And what has been known time and time again is that we have been largely uh, unsuccessful on that front. but. We have been, over the last 20 years, successful in Afghanistan. We've, we've helped ensure that more women are allowed to uh, get an, uh, a higher education. We've ensured that children are allowed uh, to go to continue, to continue school. We have taught, obviously, English uh, to more uh, Afghans that allow them to translate to the rest of the world. And so it hasn't been a total loss. And I think that's important for Americans to understand. Um, but if you're goal in Afghanistan was to build a nation like unto our Western nation, then yes, we were we failed. But that should have never been the goal to begin with. As it relates to us going to Afghanistan to uh, make it clear that we were going to hunt down those who had anything to do with 9-11, we were extremely successful at that. Um, and we achieved that mission, absolutely. And so for President Biden to finally say, well, we have done what we went there initially to do, 
And while the exit is messy, and by messy, we do mean lives of Americans lost. I mean, I saw those numbers. I'm sure we've all heard them of, of several 20-year-old students. You know, I work with that population. So to see, you know, 20-year-olds die uh, at, uh, for our own freedoms is another reminder for those of us here at home uh, of, the, of the freedom that we have to be able to go about our daily lives. It's because of the sacrifice of those American military families. And so I think President Biden did what he had to do. And I think history will say that uh, he made the right decision. In the short term, the politics will be inconvenient for him. Yeah, and when you talk about the freedoms, uh, Republicans right now talking a lot, um, being worried and speaking out about the rights of Afghan women and girls and violence against them, but they have not in the past spoken out about girls and women who are being abused in other places, other parts of the world like Central and South America by those cartels and so forth. Why do you think they're speaking out like this now? Well, you know, for Republicans, uh, so-called national security foreign policy used to be their bread and butter. Americans used to almost unilaterally assign success in that arena in terms of American politics to the Republican Party. And they lost a lot of that headway because of the success of the Obama administration in tracking down Osama bin Laden and so many other of the terrorist cells there in Afghanistan. And so it's been clear to Americans that Republicans no longer hold the mantle on our security. Uh, as President Biden has said, the number one responsibility of a president is to defend America. And really the number one responsibility of government in general is to defend our its citizens and so that that is the objective uh and and for republicans to you know take on now the criticism of of the departure of afghanistan because it fits their political talking points is really to be expected but we should point out that you know the house freedom caucus that's there asking for president biden to resign here's why we know that that's nothing but politics is because do you really think they want Vice President Kamala Harris, a black woman with Jamaican and Indian uh, uh, heritage from Howard University to be president? Of course they don't. But uh, it's talking points for them, and so we should expect that. But nonetheless, I think that the real story here is that American troops have come home from a 20-plus year war, um, and that's something that we should be celebrating in terms of uh, the loss of life have not, has now been mitigated in Afghanistan. And while we have people there who we still need to get out, the vast majority of Americans are out. And it's important for us to understand we're not there any longer because our interests are no longer there. Absolutely. Dr. Perry, I have to tell you, you dropped the mic when you said they don't want Kamala Harris to be president. You, you, <laughs> you stunned me at that point uh, with your argument there. So that's an interesting one. Um, but I appreciate you joining us uh, with your perspectives. Very interesting. And of course, uh, this isn't over. But the biggest part of it is over, but lots more analysis. Uh, and we'll see what happens with the Taliban and the way they handle things uh, in Afghanistan. Thank you so much for joining us, as always.